we're going to start dealing with proportional linear relationships. And what we have to understand is everybody wants to teach that we're drawing lines and that uh, a linear relationship is a line. And that's true. But really what we're creating and how we create it is we're just building stairs. I always show a video of uh, a do-it-yourself video of somebody making a set of stairs to my students to try to understand how we build a line. And so what I'm going to do, I've got a graph and a table. I'm going to show you exactly how we're going to build a line. I'm going to start off with an equation. Um, it's going to be a proportional relationship, so we are going to start at zero, and we're only going to really deal with the first quadrant. Uh, I'm going to give you the equation y is equal to two-thirds x. Now, the first thing that I teach all of my students is that we have a numerator and denominator, and of course, the terms that we give it is the rise and the run. But what I really like to dive into with them is making sure they understand that the numerator is going to represent the height of our stair. How tall it's going to be. The denominator, on the other hand, that's going to represent the width of our stair. So right away, we can identify as a class that the width is going to be a little bit bigger than the height of the stair. And now, since this is a proportional relationship, a lot of teachers just say, oh, we start at zero. What I like to do is, since we're kind of now going to construct these stairs, we've got to have a starting place. Um, and since they did not give us a number, usually there's like a, a plus three here, or there might be a minus two. And that tells us where to go on the y-axis. It's called the y-intercept. Well, there's no number there. I like to say all my rookie builders, we're going to put a plus zero to tell us, okay, we're going to start at zero on the y-axis. So our first point can go at zero, zero. And I'm going to go ahead and label that ordered pair as zero, zero. Now, let's build the stairs. We're going to have a height of two and a width of three. So that means I'm going to, from zero, zero, make the height of my stair or my riser uh, two. And I'm going to then move three units to the right. And I'm going to make my next point. Now, what I like to do with a lot of my students is uh, make sure that we label them right away. And what I try to imitate for them is if we were going to, if this was a giant wall instead of just a graph that's in front of us, and we had to kind of climb up to put this point up where it goes, how would we do it? We wouldn't climb the ladder and then try to j move the ladder, hop, 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 to go ahead and put that point there. That doesn't make any sense. We've got to start by moving the ladder to where we want it and then climb up the ladder to put the point. That makes a lot more sense. So what that means is we want to have our x number first, which means this point is going to be 3. And then we climb up it to the 2. So 3 comma 2. All right, let me move my ladder out of the way. And let's continue to build our stairs. So I'm going to build just a couple of more. I'm going to go up 2 and to the right 3. Up 2 to the right 3. And we could keep going, but what we've got to understand is that we've created what they call in the do-it-yourself video a, a stringer. They created this line that's going to support the stairs. We have to draw this. This is the, probably the most important piece of everything that we're doing because we've got to support these stairs. Right Before, they were just floating in midair. Not going to work. All right, so let's just go ahead, before we put these into a graph, we've got to figure out what are the other points. And so I'm going to move my ladder to 6, so that'll be the x value. And I would climb up to 4. And let me start back at the origin. I would go ahead and move my ladder to 9. And then I would climb it up to 6. 
All right, so we've got four points. We're going to put these into a table, and I'm going to show you how this table relates to our graph. We always start with the x value first, then the y value. And so the first point that I had was 0, 0. Second point, the x value was 3. We move the ladder and then climb it up to 2, and then followed by 6, 4, and 9, 6. Now we could have other points as long as we keep making stairs. And as you see, these stairs are proportional. They, each one is the same height. Each one is the same width. Okay. How can we tell the height and width of these stairs by the table that we've been given? Well, it's pretty simple. We just have to make sure that we understand that the whatever the y value is increasing by, whatever the pattern is, that's going to be our height. And the pattern that we can see here is that it's going from 0 to 2, from 2 to 4, from 4 to 6. It's increasing by 2. So our height of our stairs should be 2. We knew that from the equation. Whoops. Right here. All right, on the other side of things, we have our width. The x value and what that's increasing by or decreasing by determines the width of our stair. From 0 to 3, 3 to 6, 6 to 9. That's increasing by 3 each time. And that's what we used. We were able to see that right here in the equation. And so you have all three pieces working together. You have the graph. You have the equation, which is really the directions of how to build our stairs. And then you also have a table. And the table could also serve as directions on how to build our stairs. Hope this helped and continue to look at my other videos to help you with any of your mathematical needs.